one. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Hot Eight. Thank you once again for joining us. Um, as you'll see on the table, we're trying some new sound equipment, so hopefully this sounds okay. Um, did a little bit of research, a little bit of digging into how to get a better quality of sound to you guys. I know a couple of people have complained about the little um, clip-on microphones that we had. So we've tried these new ones. Hopefully you get a better clarity of sound coming across. Testing, um, testing. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, obviously when this video comes out, we're filming it today, which is uh, Monday. Gareth's just come straight from work. Um, we're filming this today with a view for it to going out on Thursday and Friday, by which point the most recent competition will have ended. So congratulations to whoever or whomever has won that. Yeah, well done. Uh, we have no idea who you are, obviously, because we can't see into the future. Uh, no, but I hope you like the rifle. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we will have been in touch by this point, I'm sure, and we will have told you what's what. Uh, so congratulations. And just while we're talking about competitions, we were discussing this before we turned the camera on. Um, we obviously want you guys to be more immersive in what we do, and obviously have a say in what we put out. Um, and we'd like to know, in terms of the competitions, is there anything in particular that you guys would like to see as a competition prize? Um, obviously there's certain stuff that we're not going to do and um, there's certain stuff that would be out of our budget to put out for a competition at um, the moment yeah. so like, obviously like we were saying um, we, we've had a bit of a stall at the moment um, and what we're trying to do is push the competition as much as, as we can to try and get as many tickets sold as we can so that we can increase the prizes as we go on which will happen and, and they get better and better but um, this this last time it's took I don't know uh, everyone's in a not not seen it or whatever um, and we haven't had that many tickets sold it's still going to get raffled everything else there's still someone will be uh, winning it at the moment um, so but as we increase and um, that we we're doing different ways to make that happen as we increase the number of views and everything else and everyone that that takes part that the prizes will get better but we are. We, we don't make any, let's get one thing, we don't make any money at the moment on this YouTube thing, it's completely funded by ourselves. Um, the people that have sponsored us are very grateful of, but they're giving us items, like the targets for the range and things like that, they're not financially giving us anything in any any way, shape or form, it's all completely funded by Guild, the shop and everything else. So, the, all the prizes you're getting, are funded by that as well so um the, you, we have to we have to get the prizes accordingly so if you want a stire or um the top of the range rifle then that'll happen but more people need to take part and hopefully in the future that will happen won't it it's a cheery soul isn't it happy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah just as a, a thing for us to keep an eye out if there's anything that you'd like to see different to obviously the rifles we did the fx we did the galahad We've got the Vixen, um, maybe it's a scope that you'd like to see up for raffle, or maybe a it's a night scope, or yeah, a thermal, anything like that, a, a bipod, a set stick, anything, just let us know in the comments. Um, so today, so as you can see on the table, there are two very, very different rifles out here, it doesn't really matter what they are, we're not talking about a particular manufacturer or a particular, particular style of air rifle, what we are talking about is what makes these air rifles more popular than the Section 1 stuff. Um, and we were talking about this the other day, weren't we? It was in the car and we were talking, and it must have been talking for 30, 30 minutes, an hour. Popular, um, and we said we thought it'd be a good episode to do. Um, what makes air rifles more popular than Section 1s? And it's certainly something that we see in the shop. There is definitely a, a bigger trend in the switch from air rifles to Section 1 stuff. Um, so, it yeah. Does, doesn't apply everywhere, though. Where we, we no, no, certainly bit, not. A bit of a. a, bit of a a uh, uh, side show there where basically we're, we're seeing a different trend and we'll talk about that in a, in, in a minute where mm. uh, we're seeing them more popular than these which is yeah. not, not the norm wasn't it going against no. the norm really and I think a lot of it is to do with <laughs> we look at um, section 1 and section 2 stuff and Obviously, they're signed off, certainly in England and Wales, by the, um, the firearms team, which is part of a, your local constabulary. Um, and the air rifles, for the most part, are easily accessible. As long as you're over the age of 18 and you've got some form of fault ID, you can pretty much buy one from any uh, registered firearms dealer. Um, there's lots of places you can go and shoot them. They're as cheap or as expensive as you want them to be. And there's varying options across all the different styles of rifles that you can pick for the particular... Um, style that you wanna that you wanna go after. 
I like these more as well. I had this, um, because obviously I'm a Sami, um, so that's where I've done my um, full ball rifle shooting. Um, and, you know, holdover and stuff like that that you have to do on these is massively increased to what you have to do on that. We, we were talking earlier about some scopes um, and the obviously the full bar rifles. I've got some high quality rifle scopes at the moment and they're all duplex ret. So absolutely, you know, for me doing HFT and stuff like that, I want a mill dot ret or a TMR or a Christmas tree or whatever, you know, the, the, all the different rets out there. But I want something with indicators so I can learn on my drops and then um, compensate accordingly. But with a rifle, because of the power, Mm. You guys are fine with just the crosshairs, aren't you? Yeah, not all the time. It depends on obviously the kind of ballistic that your um, chosen round is doing. Obviously, the distance that you you're shooting over, and again, what you've zeroed your rifle at. I think a lot of people think that section ones don't need to be zeroed as as finely as an air rifle. Um, does it does I tend to zero mine at fifty yards, and then obviously look at the ballistics of my rounds, and it'll say like at hundred yards it's dead on 150 yards it's an inch below and then you work out your drop based on that obviously different calibers will be different different drops and stuff um, but, but from 50 all the way to so 150 you're saying there's couple of inches node. yeah a few inches yeah. And, and on a deer well you have a 4 inch kill circle on a, on a, on a deer if you're hitting for a heart and lung shot so obviously if you know that your rifle at 100 yards is hitting an inch low you know as long as you hit somewhere within that 4 inch block you've got a circle deer. your deer's going to be down yeah that's amazing, isn't it? Mm. Compared to air gunning, I mean, mm. you know, when I go from 50 to 60, <laughs> I'm dropping two mil dots, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, that's, uh, that, that, that's a massive difference. Really. Yeah, but you've got to think the energy difference. So your yeah. pellet in a 177 is what, 777 feet per second? 777. All the sevens, yeah. <laughs> Whereas like with a, a 308 or a 270 or a two, you're talking two, three thousand feet yeah, per second. Yeah. It's ridiculously fast. Um, I see, and even with FAC air rifles, you see like um, if if a one seven seven um, goes FAC, it, it can only really go to about twenty four, twenty five foot mm. pound before the pellet starts sort of yeah wobbling, wobbling and stuff like that. And you get the same with the bullet, don't you? When yeah. it, when, it, when it goes to like four or five thousand feet per second, yeah, bit of a difference in that. But uh, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, but yeah, massive. Uh, but I I, I I can see the benefit 100% of walking in, walking out one of these. And um, I, I think a lot of it, you know, we're, we're seeing a massive um, increase in this type of gun being bought, I think. Um, more the tactical gun. Mm. Because uh, I, I think it's a, I'm going to get political here, but I, <laughs> sorry guys, bear with me. But I, I think it's a, a lot of the councils out there are changing their rubbish collection times mm. and they're sort of like my council for instance um, they collect the recycling once a week but the actual rubbish like the stuff that can't be recycled is once a month mm. so you've got this bin that could be a month old so I, I'm speaking to a few people increasing rats yeah, yeah. In, the, in the areas and people are coming in going oh have you got a gun for rats have you got a gun for rats and, mm -hmm. and we're, we're seeing a huge increase for you guys happen. watching I was wondering where he was going with that as well to be yeah, fair I, I was struggling and <laughs> I thought what's he going to say here but, but that's definitely you know um, it's had an effect like um, <laughs> councils what are you doing <laughs> if anyone here I don't think this is that kind of show if I'm being honest I, I'm, I, no, I've gone way out yeah, yeah just ignore but, Gareth just ignore me but seriously on a, on a serious note I, 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 I have no noticed um, a massive increase in, in vermin control uh, yeah, yeah. regarding rats uh, ca um, uh, one of my friends does a um, campsite he looks after a campsite and he said that because they're having to get private collections now um, also at the range we, we're having to get private collections as thank well thank you Violia they got a little <laughs> plug for you yeah yeah they're uh, massive you know because the council wouldn't come they couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get yeah. it organised could we no so I, I think that's having a huge effect and people are taking to an air gun to me you know. yeah well by the same token and this is kind of the thing as to why is an air rifle more popular than a, a section 1 I think it, it does boil down to the ease of access you could literally come in this shot with proof of ID photo ID sorry proof of ID proof of address as long as you're over the age of 18 you can walk out with a sub 12 air rifle 
And as long as you've got permission to shoot where it is you're shooting, whether that be in your own home, as long as your pellets don't stray past your boundaries, as long as you've got landlord's permission or it's not written into your tenancy agreement and stuff, you can pretty much pest control. Whereas if you own a plot of land, and I know people that this um, relates to, they own a plot of land, they've got deer on that land, foxes on that land, rabbit on that land that they want to shoot, and because they haven't got a firearms ticket, they almost have to subcontract that pest control and out to other people, and obviously they're not they're not charging people to do that. But something that they're interested in doing, they're having to get somebody else in to come and do it because they don't have the facility to to either get the ticket or hold a firearms um, license, which obviously is mental. But by the same token, that same person can walk in any gun shop as long as they've got their ID and they can yeah. buy an air rifle and they can control squirrels, rats, rabbits, um, birds as long as they're they're on general license and stuff. So yeah, so I think the popularity with air officers has grown massively because of how easy it is to get hold of them. Um, and by the same token, I think certainly in, in this shop, we see a massive amount of people that have held section one tickets or section two tickets. Section one for those of you that don't know is firearms, section two is shotguns. Um, those people coming in with a, a massive amount of firearms and shotguns and saying, listen, I'd like to swap these for an air rifle because of how hard it is to A, get your license and then B, keep it. Because every five years you've got to go through the rigmarole of getting your medical again, reapplying or renewing your ticket, which can take time. And obviously if your local constabulary is uh, behind in its workload, then they're obviously going to miss the point in time when your ticket needs to be renewed. And then you have to go and then pay for your guns to be put into storage. You have an air rifle, you kind of take all that away. You're literally, you're self-sufficient. Yeah. All you've got to do is buy your pellets. And if you're in a PCP rifle, you just need to work out how you're going to charge it. So that's either bottle, compressor, pump, take it to your local shop and they'll fill it or your local range. Um, and I just think the benefits of an air rifle are far outweighing the benefits of a Section 1 in terms of ease of, ease of access and ease of use. And I think that more people are switching that way. I, th I think there's that, definitely. Um, there's also comp you know, clubs and competitions are becoming... I think... There was a time, you know, people might not be happy with this, but there was a time when field tag was massive and it was everywhere. Yeah. Um, and I think slowly HFT was <laughs> took over. Ooh. The field tag guy is going to uh, string me up on the comments. He's annoyed the council and the <laughs> field tag <target> guys. <laughs> but, ah, it's my day for today. I'm going straight from work. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> He's not. But, um, He's not sorry but no, at all. seriously, I think HFT as a growing spot has just gone phenomenal you know yeah. um, and the world's the fact that you can just turn up and take part and, and, and the rest of the local competitions is easy to set up yeah. um, we're talking at the range about doing the prism, uh, Promatics. Pro Promatics but in a HFT style aren't yeah. we? so um, there, there's so many different but even that from a, a, a commercial or a business point of view it's so much easier to set up an air rifle range than it is yeah, to it set up a full boring. Even if it was an FAC air rifle, you would have to get home office sign off. The police would have to come and do an inspection. There's so many variables to getting it signed off and get it over the line. Whereas with an air rifle range, as long as you own the land, you've got safe backstops, you know your arc of fire and stuff, and you're insured, you're pretty much not going to have any problems. That's the, ni that's the nice thing about our range as well. I don't want to like bore you guys with history. But that that's where our range came about, isn't it? Mm. Me, me and Quill, were, were, I took him shooting on some land that I knew because um, I've shot there all my life and uh, my dad shot there. And years ago, my dad and, and the guy that originally had the shop, Reg Gizzy, were going to do a shotgun mm. range, uh, a clay pigeon shoot at, at the range where our range is. Um, however, they couldn't get sort of the right permissions and stuff because of exactly what Gwills have said Arca Fire everything else and um, the backstop with there being um, and you think how many years ago was that? 30 years ago so you think what's changed in the last 30 years in terms of firearms licensing I have guys come in the shop and tell me they would go and buy a shotgun from the local bicycle shop or you get it from a catalogue it would get delivered to your house Case catalogue used to do Man, things like that you think about that now and you yeah. think the, the amount of stringent rules that are in place now I mean just behind the camera there's five or six shotguns that are all there and they have to be bolted to the wall you know they have to be secured with a lock and key years ago they would just be in your Royal Mail van getting delivered to your door from, off from a catalogue and there's tons of right air rifles everywhere that are yeah. just strung up yeah so it is it's, it's mad how more um Difficult. rules I suppose and processes and procedures are put in place to obtain these firearms 
um, whether that be section one, section two, to have these shooting grounds, have these shooting schools. Um, and like I said before, certainly we are seeing a massive decline in section one, section two sales and a massive spike in air rifle sales. But the controversy lies, I think, if we, if we go on to that now, in Scotland, mm. where um, Scotland have brought in, this is basically, the Scotland have brought in sort of the certificate and everything for air rifles, and they've made it just as difficult to get one of these as it is to get one of these, and it's kind of backfired, hasn't it? Mm. <laughs> because... Instead of going for this, if you've got to get a ticket, you're going to go for one of them, aren't you? It's, yeah. It's, it's, you know, if you've got to go through all the rigmarole, yeah. well then, so there's what they found is, um, I was speaking to some constabularies and stuff like that, some people up there, there's a massive increase in everyone going for these high-powered rifles and FAC and everything else, yeah. uh, Section 1s, than there is people applying for the air gun licence. Well, that goes back to that point, doesn't it? Because if you've got two pathways leading you to a particular sport that you want to get into if you've got this one which is air rifles and i don't mean this in any kind of way of being derogatory to air rifle shooters it's a simple process you pick a, a rifle you, you set your budget you get yourself a decent scope you go into a shop you buy it with a section one or a section two firearm you've got so many different steps that you've got to get over to achieve what it is you want to get so if you suddenly say right that's now on license and it's the same and steps. And you've got to do the same steps as that. Well, you're going to go, right, I'll have one of them, one of them, one of them, one of them, and three of them. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be hard pushed to say you're not allowed them, because as long as you've got ground that's suitable for that calibre, as long as you've passed the medical checks to make sure you've no mental health issues that would make it a worry or a concern for them to grant you one. And that's why I wouldn't worry about it coming in England and Wales, because I think they've learned a lesson. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I really do. I don't think they're going to... There's a lot of people talking. That the, the, the talk is, you know, uh, when are these going to become licensed? When are they going to fall suit of Scotland, etc., mm. etc.? Et I can't see it happening because... I, yeah, I don't think it'll become licensed, but what I do think will happen, and I think it's the obvious one and the sensible one that will happen, similarly to when you buy a deactivated firearm, you send the person who you've bought the firearm off, oh, sorry, the deactivated firearm off, you email the name and address of the person who's purchased the deactivated firearm, and then they log it on their internal system. That for me makes sense with these. Yeah. Because if you've sold 10 air rifles to 10 different people, the firearms um, licensing team and the, the local constabularies want to know how many people have got an air rifle in their possession. So I think if you've got a list of shops that have all said, right, I will tell you that this person brought this gun and we've bought it and we've sold it to this person, mm. or we had this in from one of the stockists and we've sold it to this person, that makes more sense than saying, so basically put that on a it, yeah, so it's, tracking it rather, rather than... Well, you're collating a, a database, aren't you? It's Big Brother again, though, isn't it? I get it, but ultimately it's going to happen one way or the other, isn't it? Because I I'm sure like that it. stockists that sell... So you look at BSA, Virac, uh, Raw... Uh, but with that, with that, they're going to think people like John, our, our friend, are preparing for the next war because... When he moves his gun collection, he needed two vans. <laughs> yeah, but again, like with the DX, you can buy as many DX as you want. Yeah. It doesn't need to be the justification. That it's like, so for my firearms ticket, I have a certain amount of firearms on it that I've put on, and I've justified as to why I need each one of those calibers. And that's what you, you just had that trouble with the yeah. the rapid, haven't you? Because you had to put the rapid on your ticket. Yeah, but that's there's other people that have got weighing above what I've got in terms yeah. of calibres. They might have like 20 different calibres because they shoot different types of styles or the the gun clubs, they shoot black powder, whatever it might be. Yeah. But mine are all for a specific purpose. Deer stalking, fox controlling, ratting, squirrel, that kind of stuff. Um, so I think if you have a load of people who are buying these mm -hmm. and you collate a database that says North Wales, there's been 10,000 air rifles sold and we've tracked 6,470 of them. At least they can say, right, well, we are doing something to understand where they are, rather than saying, we're going to put this on a ticket and then have a massive influx of people going, well, if I'm applying for that, I may as well apply for that as well. So, basically, as a worst-case scenario, you think, track them. Yeah. But, but if you have those two options... Scenario, they don't do anything. Yeah, but if you have those two <laughs> options, and one of them was, right, yeah. we're going to put it on a ticket and make it ten yeah, times yeah, more definitely. difficult for you to get it, or you can tell us a serial number and we can collate and it in a database. And we can find out where it is. Sort Fine. Of yeah. And as long as you're not daft and you're not tweaking with it and you're not trying to eke out a couple more feet, foot pound, there's no reason why you would be bothered if they'd know anyway. No. I think uh, the pe 
you know, and there is people, believe me, the people that do that, I mean, be just be careful, guys. And uh, everyone, I've said this before on the show as well, everyone who's got one of these should be buying a chronograph, um, a small little chronograph, and just keep an eye on the power. Different pellets can make it go over. Yeah. Um, you know, I could have this set for 11.8 or something like that on lights and then I stick heavies in 12.1 12.2. and even even stock is like even if, sorry mate even if you buy a gun brand new from a say you go into your local gun shop and you buy a, an air rifle I would always ask what's what's it, what's it doing yeah we found because this we've had stuff coming. in from stockists and I've tested them over the crop and I've been like 14 foot pound yeah yeah. and we, they've had to go back because I'm like I ain't touching it it's, I'm going to end up voiding the warranty <laughs> yeah exactly we we actually had um, when, when if you've seen last week's video on this um, well, it wasn't this one actually. This is the new one. <laughs> this is my new toy. So the the demo gun's gone back. This is the new one. Kicked it numerous times. Um, he's tried to kick it numerous times. Um, but basically, if you've seen the video, um, this comes with a sheet of paper saying mm. um, how many feet per second it's doing straight out out of the factory sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I think when I bought my Walther um, Dominator, that came with exactly the same piece of paper and uh, a nice target and stuff same with my style. I think a lot more manufacturers are starting to follow suit in that I know the Anschutz does it as yeah. well well the, the um, new ones we've had in the shop the Air Max they're the same yeah they come with a little piece of paper tells you like over six shots what feet per second it's doing what foot pound it's doing what grain pellets it was used and at what distance it was shot over lovely touch but that's just that should just be a standard, shouldn't it? It should be, definitely, because like Will said, we had I a couple of things as well, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it's nice coming with that because you can keep that and, and give it to the next person. And yeah. um, I think as well, something that air gun manufacturers are missing out on is uh, everyone I speak to, we're all a bit anal, guys, you know, we, we and girls, sorry, we, we, we like the paperwork and stuff like that. and Service booklets, come on guys, you know, get get these service booklets given out just like a car one. Mm. So that you can give I can give that in at the shop and say, Can you fill my service booklet out? And then when I go to alright, people probably fill it in themselves I guess, but when you go to purchase a new rifle, at least you can have a rough idea of how long it's been looked after and stuff like that. Just like you're buying a car, you wouldn't yeah. you wouldn't go and spend all your money on a top end car second hand if you didn't have good service history would you you know you'd want a discount sort of thing I suppose that's the difference with the air isn't it it's almost like it's that trust factor isn't it same with the yeah. constabularies you're being trusted with it even though it could cause damage yeah. you are being trusted with it to a point and by the same token if you came to sell that to somebody that person's taking you at your word that it's what it's done yeah and you could have stripped that up the power shot it forever wound it back down give it on and then go no it's, nah, I've never been messed with yeah <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And it happens a lot. We haven't come in the shop. People say, "Oh, can you have a look at this for me? Like I've just bought it. I just want to know what it's like." And you strip it and go, "Oh, it's it's definitely been messed with." We had a, a rapid in the other week, and it come in, and the hammer spring. As soon as I opened it, I went, "That's an FAC one." He was like, "No, it's not." Shot it like twenty two foot pound. And the um, there's a ninety seven there right now. It was it seventy seven, ninety seven, ninety seven. 97 on the bench never been out of the stock take out the stock and scratches everywhere yeah it's definitely been out of the stock um, you know the, 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 yeah it, it'd be nice to have um, that sort of thing so air gun manufacturers <laughs> listen to this show and get yourself a little booklet saying uh, service booklet or something to out with each rifle it'd be fantastic just keep it with it I think the other problem with that is though that not everyone who buys an air rifle is going to get it serviced by <clears throat> a gunsmith yeah. There's a lot of people that self certain and that's fine if you know what you're doing, absolutely. But again, if you have a car that's, say you buy a Ford and it's only ever serviced by a main dealer, and then all of a sudden you take it to Joe around the corner who does a service for 50 quid. Yeah. If he doesn't stamp that book or he doesn't fill it in or service it in the same way that Ford do, straight away it's out of sync, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've seen this. Um, one of the things that I try and help out with quite a lot is um, I, myself and a guy called Joe. Hiya, Joe. Um, we've been looking after the Ripley uh, Facebook group for a long, long time now. Um, Joe mainly, by the way. I try and help when he's not well and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, it's mainly Joe. Uh, Ripley Owners Club. Uh, anyone who wants to come on Facebook and join it, crack on. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I've, we, we see all the time people coming to us, come... Can, can we have a service can we get a service yeah. and then we try and put them in touch with the shop we sent Dave's down didn't we yeah, yeah. Um, Davey worked um, at, at the shop we sent his down for a uh, service 
And I think the higher end the rifle, the more you spend on it, the more you want to keep up that manufacturer sort of yeah. warranty. If you, it's like a car. If you've paid a thousand pound for a car, which I've done many times, yeah, you're gonna take um, it to the little you're garage around the corner. Local it. garage around the corner. You're not gonna. But there's nothing wrong with them sticking a stamp in the book. They're just like. Um, and myself, when, I, when I've had cheap cars, I've, I've done a service and I've just wrote in what I've done in the service and kept the receipts for the things that I've used. Yeah. And um, I think building up a booklet with your rifle, when you buy, if you put new seals in and you buy <coughs> the seals from Nibs or whatever like that, hello, John, by the way, uh, Mark, sorry, I was there the other week. Another little plug. Um, plug to Mark. You get paid for these. I should do, shouldn't That's I? That's play. Nibs, council. Should do, shouldn't I? Yeah, I should definitely um, write some free goodies from Nibs, please. Um, <laughs> send um, some breach seals. But, uh, yeah, send us some breach seals. But um, yeah, if you if you sort of keep a, a little receipt book and, and and put that with your gun and say to someone, you know, I'd much rather buy a gun like that that had lo- a ton of receipts and uh, than a gun that looked like it never been touched and probably hasn't. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, um, how did we go from that to that? You, you're just waffling. <laughs> um, this is why we're going to do this. It's, um, it's a different type of show today, guys. We we, we decided to have, have, have a basic chat. And, uh, and uh, if you guys like this sort of show, let us know. And if if you don't like it and you want to do more focus shows, let us know that as well. So. I think it's important to have a good mix in it because obviously our views are our views, mm-hmm. and I think for the most part, people watching like to see our views or hear our views. Sorry. And then if it's more you guys being involved and saying, listen, we'd love you to show us this. Can you show us how to strip down that? Can you show us how you would clean this? Can you show us how you do zero that? Then we can do that as well. I think it, we, it's nice to have a nice balance in it between Definitely. an open and honest debate about stuff. Um, yeah. Gareth being more the air rifle focus, me being the bigger stuff. And we spoke we spoke the other day as well. Um, I think we've mentioned this already, but any, any of the previous videos that Lloyd and um, Tony did on, on the old show um, if there's anything out there that you've you've watched or you're not happy with or you think you'd like to see our views on it yeah I think, there's a, I think um, there's a couple in there we were talking about it sorry mate we were talking about this the other day like there was a couple weren't there where you watch them back and you think did they ever answer the question yeah like we had looked at a few and it was like oh I'd love to see this up against that and we looked at it and was like well, did that ever happen and yeah. I couldn't see the answer to it and one of my favourite shows, um, it gets tons of views. Is classic the classic. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, it's had like eighty-seven thousand views or something. Yeah, so fair it's play. Mad. Um, the, yeah, massive, massive amount of views, and it's a great show. It's a brilliant show, mm. and I'd love to do. I know we did the Venom show um, when we first started, and that that was um, meant a lot to us because we're both mad on Venoms. Long time ago. Um, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, seems like we've been doing this forever now, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, we we really um, any any of the shows, let us know, guys. Um, keep keep us um, in the loop, and we'll try and yeah. do it for you. And I think comments in general, guys. We love reading the comments. It's really nice having you guys involved. It doesn't just feel like me and Gareth are talking to a, a camera that's sat just over there. It actually, feels like we're doing something and we're, we're conversing with you guys. Um, and that leads us on to the the last little point I want to mention, and that is just it means a lot to us when you guys do leave comments, when you do like. Um, and also when you subscribe there's there's a lot of percentage of people that watch these videos that aren't subscribed I know it's normally Gareth that bleats on about subscribers and I say phone the subscriber please um, but ultimately it does mean that we can do more shows and it does show us that you guys are interested and we would love to get up to like 8,000 subscribers 10,000 subscribers and we have said if we get up to 10,000 subscribers by Christmas we will do something really really special I think we can do it we've got, we've got um, a little bit of a so we can let everyone know about that, can't we? What? The magazine. Yeah? yeah. I had no idea who was talking about them. <laughs> so, Gwil has very, um, been having a chat with magazine, uh, the most, I, I, as a kid, I said, I phoned my mum, as soon as I found out about this, I phoned my mum, and I said, Mum, as a kid, when you took me into the news agents, what did they beg you for? And drag on your arms and say, please, Mum, can you get me one? And she said, the air gun magazine. It wasn't. And, it was one of them uh, top uh, shelf as Gareth. <laughs> I, I, I wish it was, but it wasn't. It was air gun. <laughs> air gun world, air gun. I've got tons of them. And I, I've always, you know, from the, the days of having a little bike up to, to what I've got now, you know, uh, and everything else I've got, um, I've been air gun mad. And Gwil has managed to get the, the, the obviously, 
the story behind it all, the, the shop, and then the um, YouTube came along uh, after meeting me. Yeah. And then um, his fault. <laughs> my fault. The YouTube. Cheers, Lloyd. Um, and then um, we we got the range going, um, and and now we're still yeah. And it's been all in. To be fair, I think that it come about because we do um, an article it's not an article we do an advert in one of the magazines like once a month and basically their editor came <clears throat> to me and said um, we would really like to do a, a piece on not only the shop but the fact that you do YouTube and the fact that you do um, the range as well <clears throat> and also that we've only been trading like for 18 months so we've gone from me just being in the shop on my own not really being involved in the online stuff and just selling stuff and running it day to day to now operating a, a second business which is the range yeah which albeit isn't very busy at the minute it's still finding its feet and it's still just getting there but it is coming there apart from weekends yeah we sat this on the stupid yeah <laughs> and then doing obviously the the youtube stuff and that came about just because of a little bit of a joking conversation we had weren't it where gareth said oh we should do youtube and then lloyd had obviously said well if you want to take over ours you're the two that we'd like to do it so we was like yeah we'll give it a go so i think they saw some form of oh sorry not some form some sort of I don't know. Startup. Yeah, magic or something in that. They thought they think it's a good story, so I said, yeah, I'd be more than happy to to put something down. So they've sent a rough draft over today. It made me sound like I know what I'm doing, which is good. Um, so yeah, so so we're looking forward to that. Really pleased with that. Um, and thank you to Airgun World for reaching out to us. Yeah, That's thanks very the much. The final plug. I'm not going to mention anybody else. Um, <laughs> so really, really chuffed that they've reached out to us and said like they want to they want to do a bit of a piece on us. I think that'll make um, that should. Centerfold as well. <laughs> Open up I'm magazine good. in the middle, and you're gonna see me and him. Hey. <laughs> I um, I don't know if that's good or bad. Bad, I'm, very I'm bad. I'm over the moon, but I don't know if it's good or bad. But yeah. um, but yeah, I, I'm glad I've lost a few pounds for the photos. <laughs> I've used an old one, don't worry. I, no, don't. <laughs> I'm getting thinner by the day. Yeah. But, um, so it does. It means a lot, doesn't it? Any kind of. And hopefully that that'll draw some subscribers and yeah, hope so. um, people that don't know about us and uh, will hopefully find out about us through through the aircon world. Um, and and if we do get to that ten thousand, we're going to do something special, aren't we? Yeah. Um, for a for a prize. Um, Naked calendar of Gareth. He uh, don't everyone. You don't want to see April. Would, would be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it means a lot to us that we've been approached and obviously. The support that you guys give us on this channel it's, it's all because of you guys at the yeah. end of the day if you guys weren't watching us we had no had over a million views we did we didn't know that this was going to do what it did that we know we took it off we, we we were it was a big gamble we didn't we had no idea that you guys were going to keep watching we, we kind of said well if we put a show out there and no one watches it we just won't do it again yeah and then we did the venom one it was like two thousand views and it was like oh <laughs> <laughs> and it's gone bigger and bigger yeah. so yeah it's thanks guys yeah. big, big thank you to everyone who's watching and if you can um, like subscribe and share um, share's a massive one if you share it and then other people get to see it that don't necessarily know about it that's yeah that's it one massive. person could share it to 100 people and 10 of those people might be interested yeah. and they might think oh do you know what we'll watch it and we might retain 4 or 5 of them which would be fantastic yeah. um, anyway we've waffled so, we have we've waffled a lot um, yeah, we hope that the sound quality is improved for those yeah, of you let, that were suffering let us know um, let us know what you think about the, yeah. the sound and we're not audio technicians by any manner of means so if this sounds like terrible yeah then <laughs> sorry <laughs> we'll, we'll keep trying different positions and different settings within the mics and stuff um but yeah so for today hopefully you've enjoyed the show it's a slightly different format than we'd normally do we've enjoyed doing it we just like waffling don't we about stuff which is good um but yeah as gareth said please like share subscribe comment as much as you can let us know what you would like to see in the competitions let us know about the previous episodes that Lloydie and Tony did. If there's any that you didn't feel were boxed off, any that you might have unanswered questions about, please put them in the comments and we will we will jump on that. Um, and well done to the winner, whoever you are. Um, yeah, we'll be speaking to you live at some point this week, so whoever you are, well done. Um, and for those that didn't win, apologies, better luck next time. Um, yeah, we will keep doing comps, but like I say, you need to just give us a bit of a steer as to what you want to see. <clears throat> um, but for now, that's it, guys. So we will see you next week. Thank you and goodbye. Bye guys, take care.